in today's lab, we'll be uh, carrying out a chemical reaction, which is, in organic chemistry is called Fischer esterification, uh, named after a Amit Fischer, a, a great uh, uh, chemist. Um, he discovered that if you take any alcohol and uh, contain OSO and, uh, and, and, and carboxylic acid, COOH, uh, if you mix them together in uh, the uh, presence of a strong acid, like usually people use uh, uh, sulfuric acid or perchloric acid, strong acid as a catalyst, and you mix them together and heat them together uh, and you get ester formation. Okay, so you can make an ester by combining alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Specifically in this lab, we'll be using the alcohol part, uh, isopentyl alcohol. Uh, some people call it isoamyl alcohol. Uh, uh, IU would be a 3 methyl 1 butanone. Anyway, it's an alcohol, it's a primary alcohol. Um, and uh, here specifically, we, we are using acetic acid, ethanoic acid. And so, this is the carboxyl group and this is the uh, alcohol group and we are mixing them together and making a bond and when you make a bond a small molecule comes out like here uh, water for example H2O see O here H and H H2O comes out and a bond is established between this carbon and this oxygen so that's why we have this uh, ester bond formation so this is an esterification reaction a reaction in which ester bond is formed and it's a condensation reaction basically uh, uh, because uh, it's because you make a bond between the two reactants and a small molecule like water comes out now esters are very <coughs> nice smelling compounds generally you know they are small molecular weight compounds and they nice very 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 nicely they smell very nicely uh, so you they actually uh, when you prepare this compound there will be nice smell all over the lab, okay, that's the iso and acetate. And my PowerPoint, you will see I have explained the mechanism of this esterification as well as I have given you many examples in which uh, small molecules, small molecule esters uh, are examples of uh, compounds that are present in uh, the fruits. For example, this compound is iso and acetate, it is also called banana oil because this present, this uh, a compound very similar to this or same, same compound is found in the, um, in the banana. Other fruits they also have nice smelling esters. Okay, and you if you watch my PowerPoint, uh, you will see that. Okay, we are back in the lab, and let me introduce to you some of the chemicals that we'll be using. This is isoamyl alcohol or isopentyl alcohol. Uh, isoamyl alcohol is an older name and you can also name it according to IUPAC. Now I have measured 5 mil of uh, isoamyl alcohol in it but before that I actually masked this empty cylinder then, and I added 5 mil of uh, uh, isoamyl alcohol then weighed it again and that way I can find out the mass of uh, isoamyl alcohol. This is glacial acetic acid. Glacial acetic acid is used as a solvent as well as a reactant it has a dual function and I have measured 7 mil of uh, uh, acetic acid same way empty cylinder first then 7 mil and then weigh it again to find out the mass of acetic acid you you need the mass now this is a, acid, a sulfuric acid uh, 1 mil and the sulfuric acid is not reactant it is one of the it is uh, uh, it is a catalyst. Now be careful about sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is highly corrosive. Uh, this one uh, is a round bottom flask. Uh, it has a boiling chip in there to ensure that the boiling remains smooth and it doesn't boil over. Uh, this is a separatory funnel with a stopcock. So this is the glassware that you need and the reactants. Uh, now during the workup, workup means that you have completed the reaction now you are trying to isolate your desired product. During that time you need saturated sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is also called brine in chemistry and biology. This is a baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. This is a mild base. This will be neutralizing uh, acetic acid and sulfuric acid later on after the reaction. Alright, so we are ready to add everything. Uh, this is uh, 
5 ml of uh, isoamyl alcohol or isopentyl alcohol or 3 methyl 1 butanol or UPAC name. This is acetic acid being used as a solvent as well as a reactant. But you don't put it directly into the uh, into this into the flask. You add it to the first cylinder, and then transfer that the rinse into this flask. That way, you make sure that all alcohol has been added. When you added alcohol in the first place, there was some alcohol left in the cylinder. So yes, that's why you use the rinse. Now this is a one mil of sulfuric acid. You could use it with the uh, directly or with the help of a pasture pipette. Okay, so we have everything that we need for this reaction: isopentyl alcohol, acetic acid, and sulfuric acid as a catalyst. Now we are going to stick it underneath the uh, water condenser. Water going in from the lower end inlet and outlet from the upper end. So water is circulating in the outer jacket of the uh, condenser. Alright, so make sure it uh, you hold it really nicely uh, make sure it doesn't fall down. It should, the flask should sit right into the socket of the heating mantle. That donut looking thing is a heating mantle. Alright, so heating mantle is connected to a temperature controller and this controls the temperature. You set it at 65. You turn it on, then it is a 65 setting. 65 setting will be, will ensure that the mixture starts uh, boiling or heating uh, at the temperature that you need for this reaction. Alright, so we are now ready to boil it for, uh, boil it, once when it starts boiling then you have to heat it, boil it for 45 minutes before you terminate the reaction. All right, so all we have got to do is just wait. Uh, now our reaction is complete. We have been reflexing it for 45 minutes. It has attained uh, darker colors. Sometimes you don't get color, but so other times you get color. It doesn't really matter. Uh, color should not matter to you. So we should remove the keck clamp and we should disassemble from top to bottom. Uh, remove the condenser, a water condenser, okay, disconnect it. Make sure you twist it a little bit. Be careful, it has sulfuric acid and acetic acid, those are dangerous chemicals. So make sure you use gloves and uh, when you are detaching it. And so you put it uh, uh, in, into a separatory funnel, you transfer the liquid reaction mixture into the separatory funnel and we are doing the workup. You know workup means any process by which you are isolating the desired product from the uh, once, once the reaction is complete. Once you have transferred the liquid you might get a little bit of solid in there you just add uh, sodium chloride, saturated sodium chloride solution to dissolve it and uh, it's, called so, it's also a rinse with uh, brine or saturated sodium chloride. Brine is just a name for saturated sodium chloride. You swirl it and you transfer the rinse into the separatory funnel. Now you should see two layers clearly in, in the uh, separatory funnel. Lower layer is aqueous layer which should have acetic acid and sulfuric acid in there and the upper layer is your product. It's darker in color but as I mentioned before no don't worry about it. It will become clear later. So two layers, uh, upper layer is aqueous, uh, upper layer is organic layer which is your isoamyl acetate product, banana oil and the lower layer is uh, just the aqueous layer. Alright, so you drain the lower layer, you open the stopcock and very carefully, slowly uh, drain carefully uh, into the into a beaker or alumni flask. At the very end, be very slow. 
you just want to drain the lower layer and keep the upper organic layer which is your product isoamyl acetate when banana oil you should keep it in the separatory funnel now you add saturated sodium bicarbonate which is baking soda remember baking soda as a base is going to neutralize acetic acid as well as sulfuric acid so now the color should improve when you see you see the, the the bubbling that bubbling is because of carbon dioxide whenever an acid reacts with a carbonate or bicarbonate you get evolution of carbon dioxide so you let the let it let it out otherwise it will develop some pressure later on so it's a good idea to swirl you swirl it there's a circular motion of the separatory funnel and that way you can see that the color is improving it is becoming less colored uh, see here it's become is clear it's uh, clarifying now you see two layers very nicely again uh, the up, up, upper layer is your desired product which is banana oil and the lower layer is the aqueous layer now the aqueous layer should be salts of sulfuric acid and acetic acid okay you turn upside down and upside down several times and what you're doing is you're trying to wash the banana oil and bleed it and bleeding means the carbon dioxide should go out uh, so that it doesn't develop pressure inside so you bleed it you release the pressure of carbon dioxide and do it again a little bit faster S uh, faster movement ensures that your banana oil is properly washed and there's no acid left in there okay so you put it back into the ring stand it's a good idea to put the separatory funnel in a ring stand and then drain from there um, a lot of people including myself they do it holding the separatory funnel in hand but um, that probably is not a very good practice for the undergraduate level okay leave it there in the stand and drain it from there okay now you drain the lower layer lower layer is useless layer it is aqueous layer it doesn't really have anything it doesn't have your product the product is the upper layer so you make sure you drain it very carefully so that you can retain the upper layer and only drain the lower layer be very careful at the very end as soon as it is out immediately arrest it by stop uh, turning the stopcock off all right so basically this is your uh, banana oil okay isoamyl acetate the ester that's the ester that you have made by fissure esterification now you want to remove moisture there might be some moisture in there the way to do that is uh, wash it with saturated sodium chloride solution uh, and certain sort of sat so saturated sodium chloride solution is also called brine you put brine in there and again you turn it upside down in other words you are basically shaking it with in inside the separatory funnel and releasing the pressure again and notice now the upper layer is clarifying it's becoming more clear not opaque anymore because it has removed moisture the opaqueness was because of moisture okay so sodium chloride has a removed maybe 90% of moisture uh, from your banana oil layer see very clear slightly yellow or pale yellow product that's fine it should be colorless but pale yellow is acceptable you now again drain off the lower layer very carefully make sure you retain the upper layer which is banana oil now the whole lab actually must be by now it should be smelling very nicely because banana oil remember it's a fragrance it's an essential oil now you use anhydrous sodium sulfate anhydrous sodium sulfate remove the last traces of uh, moisture in your organic layer so you basically you drain it down into the beaker containing the anhydrous uh, sodium sulfate 
this will remove the last traces of moisture the your layer will become further nicely looking clear okay you put it there and now you swirl it for a minute or so swirl it like that circular motion and then leave it for about five minutes in the hood after swirling basically we are done our workup is done now we are going to basically remove the oil and wait for the next step so all we have to do now is uh, transfer the liquid into a teared flask so that we can find out the mass of the product the banana oil so transfer all of it very carefully uh, as much as you can and then reweigh the flask with the, the banana oil and find out the yield so we are going to conclude uh, our experiment uh, the first in the blue data is the you know the mass of the cylinders and alcohol and uh, the acetic acid that's uh, before the experiment and the lower data in the red is the most recent one mass of the e flask is 49 40.99 gram and with the product is 45.72 gram all right so if you subtract the upper number from the lower number you get the mass of the product so mass of the product is 4.73 grams all right so that's your yield basically so remember this is uh, the yield in grams you have to find out in percentage the percentage yield you need to find out the limiting reagent using two dimensional equations once you do that once you determine the limiting reagent based on that you find out the percentage yield and uh, uh, it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry so it should be easy to find out the percentage yield now how to characterize this uh, uh, product you know you, you normally use uh, NMR and things like that right NMR IR and mass spectrometry but there's a simple technique called TLC thin layer chromatography you learned uh, this in, uh, in organic chemistry one so on the left side you have the product on the right side you have a spot for the uh, starting material isoamyl alcohol so uh, when you elute it now this is isoamyl alcohol this is your starting material this is your product isoamyl acetate which is banana oil so banana oil is a little bit less polar compared to alcohol alcohols are more polar therefore when you elute it this part should be lower and the product part should be higher because product is less polar less polar moves faster on the TLC so if you see only one spot that's great okay that means your experiment was successful but if you get two spots like one major and one minor a little bit you know, parallel to the right one that means your product is not your reaction didn't go to completion there was some left over alcohol okay uh, hopefully you'll get only one spot